Well, delegates from Russia and Ukraine are starting to make progress in a new round of peace talks that kicked off today. Holly Williams is in central Ukraine this morning with more on that and a firsthand look at what it's like on the ground as people take cover from attacks by Russian military. Good morning, Holly. Good morning. Well, Russia says those talks have concluded for today that they were constructive and importantly that Russia will radically reduce military operations in the direction of Ukraine's capital, Kyiv. The towns of Urpin, just north of the capital, Kyiv, and Trostyanets to the east have been recaptured from the Russians, according to the Ukrainian military. In many places, Russian ground forces are stalled and taking heavy losses. The occupiers are pushed away from Erpin and Kyiv, said Ukraine's president Vladimir Zelensky in a video message last night. But he also said it's too soon to talk about safety. That's exactly what we found when we tried to visit the town of Makariv yesterday. Ukrainian forces say they recaptured it last week. It looks as though this, this area is still getting shelled by the Russians. But as we approached its outskirts, with a convoy of Ukrainian troops, they told us to get out and take cover because the Russians were watching from the sky. So the Ukrainians are saying that there is a drone overhead and they want us to spread out to be less of a target. Back to the cars. Back to the cars. We turned back, travelling at high speed. The Ukrainians now saying four Russian drones were overhead. But then they ordered us out again. Get out of the car. And into the forest to take cover. We're hearing shelling. There's one just now. Many of Makariv's residents were evacuated earlier this month. Everything was shaking like this, said one woman. The planes were flying so low we thought they'd shoot our house. But not everyone made it to safety. This security camera video reportedly shows an elderly couple killed by Russian artillery. To the cars. Cars, let's go. We eventually left Makariv. But if this is what liberation looks like... We go full speed, full speed, do you copy? Ukraine's fight for freedom may be long and dangerous. The Russians have shown over and over again during this war that when they can't take control of towns and cities, they'll still pummel them with missiles, airstrikes and shelling at the cost of civilian lives. Anne-Marie and Vlad... Absolutely terrifying, Holly. Uh, what, what more can you tell us about those drones that the Ukrainians told you were above you while you were out reporting yesterday with your crew? Yeah, Vlad, we believe that we saw and heard one of them overhead, but the Ukrainians said that there were four in the area. Uh, we understand that they were likely reconnaissance drones, that is, used to identify targets. So the fear was that they would spot us uh, and then that we would become a target. And that's clearly why the Ukrainians told us not just to get out of the cars and to take cover, but to disperse, to spread out so that we were, we were less of a sort of centralised target. So, Holly, you know, we've been reporting that, that peace negotiations have resumed. They're taking place um, in Turkey after several weeks of being stalled. There are also reports out there that some of the participants had been poisoned and had spent the past few weeks actually recovering from that. I can't imagine that is helping to the mood, helping with the mood, rather, as they resume these talks. Can you get us, give us sort of any more information about, you know, what's going on with that? Well, interestingly, the news out of Istanbul, Turkey, today where these talks are taking place is, is surprisingly promising. Uh, Russia says that it is taking steps to de-escalate. Crucially, that includes uh, radically reducing military operations in the direction of Kiev, the Ukrainian capital. And the Russians have even said that a meeting may now be possible between President Vladimir Putin and Ukraine's leader, President Vladimir Zelensky. That is something that the Ukrainians have long asked for. Now, one of Russia's key demands is Ukrainian neutrality. That is the idea that going forward, Ukraine would not have any military allies. And recently, Ukraine has said that it's open to discussing that. However, Ukraine also has a demand that there will be security guarantees. That is, guarantors, like, for instance, the US, who are obliged to step in if Ukraine is attacked. So the idea is that Ukraine would not join NATO because it would be, you know, a neutral country, but it would still have these security guarantees in place. So we'll see where this goes. But today, certainly, this looks promising. And remember, the lead-up to this was 
Russia's invasion of Ukraine, but then a much stronger Ukrainian resistance than, than many people thought that they would put up. And then heavy Russian losses, including between seven and 15,000 Russian soldiers killed, including to one NATO, according to one NATO official. Mm. Uh, Holly, you know, all uh, throughout the course of this invasion, we've been uh, reporting, you have been reporting, you and your crew and other uh, of our CBS News colleagues reporting on the pain and suffering of uh, the people in Ukraine. But we also, uh, you know, want you and your crew to be safe because when we see video like that, I know it's absolutely harrowing. Uh, so thank you. Uh, it reminds me always of what Scott Pelley used to always say, which is that somewhere around the world, there is somebody from CBS News who's putting their life at risk to bring us the news. Um, and so please be careful, you and your crew. We wish you the best. Thank you. Thanks, Vlad.